Hey everybody, how are you? I wanted to make an informative video about refrigeration. I'm a self-taught refrigeration mechanic. I live in South Africa, out here in the Eastern Transvaal. And um, I have solar power, I'm into alternative forms of electricity and so forth. And uh, when you have a solar powered system, it's kind of a hassle and it's very expensive to buy a very large system. Large system meaning batteries are expensive, solar panels are expensive, uh, especially with the Rand dollar conversion that we have today. So, the only thing to do is you have to get your overall power consumption down. I've scoured the internet for people that talk about refrigeration, people that talk about uh, ways and means of making refrigerators, uh, refrigeration systems run more economical on electricity. So there's nothing nicer than having a shop like we do in a tea garden and having an old beverage cooler, glass door, Coca-Cola fridge. Uh, the ladies can look into the fridge and they can see what's happening before they open up the door. They can see where everything is uh, nice and neatly packed away. So something like this is a must have for me. A lot of people would like to have these but they are very expensive to run on electricity. A normal Coca-Cola double door beverage cooler runs about between seven and eight and a half amps of electricity. That's 220 volt for those of you that didn't know. So this used to be an old triple door that I got from somebody for free. I actually done some work for them. So the first thing that I had to do is, is I tried to make it light on electricity. It drew about just over eight amps of electricity. It had one and a quarter horsepower 134A compressor in. I'm going to pick up the phone and show you around just now. So the first thing that I had to do is this, I had to take out the compressor and the condensing unit that's underneath the fridge normally. Uh, it generates a lot of heat and a lot of noise that you don't want inside the building. It's just unnecessary when it stands outside, like I've done outside the wall. Then it stands in the cool breeze and it runs more efficiently. Second thing that I had to do is, is I had to go buy a new compressor and that was an R600A compressor. I bought a half a horsepower that is the largest that you can get currently in R600. They are quite scarce. I've seen on the internet a lot of people don't talk about R600 because it's a hassle to work with. There's a 50% difference in gas pressure between R600 and 134A. It's 50% lighter on electricity R600 and it has a 50% less pressure when you look on the gauge when you charge it up, which I'll show you. There's a lot of other things that people don't tell you about refrigeration, like how to determine capillary tube length. This is a hassle. Um, over here I have a beverage cooler capillary tube. Uh, I'm not going to open up this panel to show you. They run normally here in uh, the center pillar between the doors. There's a cavity. And this is what regulates your gas pressure and your flow. Uh, it's got a hole inside. Beverage coolers have got quite a large diameter hole. So the quicker the gas flows through, the quicker the system cools, the slower the gas flows, the longer it takes. So that's pretty simple to understand, but nobody tells you the length. So the length that I've currently used here is about 1.4 meters inside this middle section. And that seems to be working quite fine. Uh, I had to get a double door fridge uh, evaporator unit that I put up in here. Um, unfortunately this is a little bit narrower than a standard double door so I had to cut a hole into the one section which I'll show you now. Uh, put a new beverage cooler thermostat in and I have an electronic um, thermometer up here just to show you the temperatures that I'm running at. Uh, currently the compressor switched off a while ago now so it's just busy idling and uh, I just want to point up in here and just show you what's happening. So it's a little bit dark in here. So I have a light that I just turn on. Up over there you can see is the uh, evaporator system. Everything is pretty standard uh, the way that it was with the triple door. The only thing that I've done is I replaced this unit. I just want to show you on the side of the fridge. Here you can see is the new panel that I put up after I cut it away. And I don't know if you can see that, but there's a, a, a little block that's sticking out. That's the hole that I actually had to cut for that unit, for the pipes, just to bend around there. It was a little bit too long for this fridge, but I made it work. I've replaced the old larger fans, used to have three fans with a normal 120mm. These are used in computers, they draw a lot less electricity. 
And here's another one over there. It's quite an old unit, as you can see, the fins are not nice and straight, but it works pretty well. So uh, up over here, we have the beverage cooler thermostat, and it's set on full, it's on seven at the moment. And up over there is the electronic thermometer, and there you can see it is on 0 0.5 degrees Celsius. 0 0.4, you see it's going down, means the compressor is running now. And I've got the probe in on the lowest pipe on the uh, evaporator. That's on your suction line, the return line back to the compressor. So that's the uh, overall temperature of that right now. And the ambient temperature down here in the fridge, I hope you can see that. There's a, a old thermometer over there and there you can see it's about on six degrees now. So six degrees is where you want to be. I just put some stuff in the fridge overnight just to see how it holds up. Uh, there's the drip tray that I made. There you can see there's a pipe at the bottom running down all the way and that takes out all the moisture that drips off. So what you need to understand is there's normally ice buildup on these evaporators. So you don't want the ice to build up then it means the air doesn't flow through. So that's the job that the fans actually do. They break off the ice and then that turns into water as you know and then it drips down and it goes out. You don't want it landing inside the fridge. As you can see, the floor is gray. I had to cut out all the rust, uh, put some aluminum uh, corners in, I had to seal it up nicely. Uh, all the shelves are currently being sanded and, and because they're just in a hell of a state. So what I want to show you down here is the amount of electricity that we are drawing. So I've got the amp meter on and I don't know if you were able to see that. 2.03 amps, that's what we're drawing now. So just over 2 amps of electricity on a 220 uh, volt fridge, R600A compressor, half a uh, horsepower that's cooling this fridge currently. Um, over here, I just want to show you, this is the side glass. And I don't know if you can see that, but there's the liquid. It's about three quarter full, just to show you. And just to make a comparison, this is actually quite interesting that I want to show you. Over here is an older model single door Coke fridge. Right, I've done nothing to this. The compressor is still inside. It's going to be a little bit noisy. So what I wanted to do is I want to go ahead and I want to turn it on. As you can hear, it's coming on now. And then I just wanted to uh, put the clamp meter on here yeah? just to show you what a 134A single door fridge runs at on electricity 3.33 amps of electricity. So, how's this possible? 134A single door, double door. 2 amps. Right, I'm going to take you outside and show you what I did. Right, we're outside. It's a little bit more noisier here. Yeah? This is the original condensing unit that came out of the three-door coke fridge. I basically just lengthened the pipes and I moved it outside. I threw a nice concrete block over here for it to stand on. I'm still going to bolt it down in case somebody tries to steal it. <laughs> Uh, over here is the R600A compressor, half a horsepower, and I still have my gauge on here. I've been running this fridge overnight now, it's been running for about 15 hours or so, and it's about 8 o'clock in the morning, and I just wanted to show you the pressure that we are at now. Can you see it's about just over 4, between 4 and 3 PSI. This is now with the fans running on the inside. So what you need to know is, is if I have to switch off the fans on the evaporating unit and inside the pressure would automatically drop down because there's less airflow and circulation. So when I charge it up, I charge it up normally to about zero PSI. And then the moment the fans start kicking in and the hot air starts flowing, then the pressure starts picking up. On a very hot day, the pressure will go up all the way, maybe to about eight PSI. The cooler, the lower it goes down. And obviously you guys know that your yellow line is uh, where you put your gas into the system. Uh, over here I have another compressor standing. This is just an old 134A. 
that I'm currently using as a as an evacuation pump so I've sealed off the charge line and over here you can see is the heating pipe I've brought it up over here I've also put a valve on here because now I can blow and I can suck on the suction line whenever I want so uh, just put valve covers on here now you can see is I just hook my my yellow line on here and then what I do is I just turn it on and then I evacuated all the air out of the system it's not just about air that's in the system a lot of people will tell you that there's moisture build up inside the pipe so moisture is bad because the moment it gets stuck inside the lines then it basically freezes the gas runs at a very low temperature and once it freezes it clogs up the system so I just wanted to show you up close over here uh, this is the suction line that comes back to the R600 compressor and as you can see it has a lot of damp on it now according to what I know this is perfect uh, the reason why is because once your suction line freezes up all the way to the compressor then you know that you have over gassed your system it's the pressure is too high and thus it's freezing but when there's damp on the pipe continuously it means your system is running at an optimum temperature it is making it as cold as possibly what it can so this draws with this fan the fan on the inside and the compressor draws two amps of electricity so the, so the compressor by itself draws a bit less it draws about one and a half amps maybe 1.6 1.65 so uh, I hope this video was a little bit uh, it gave a little bit of insight to you on how to uh, make your own beverage cooler run a little bit more efficient making a three-door run on this system is impossible the compressor is unfortunately too small so uh, double door is the only one that you can do it on double door obviously a single door so that's what I'm gonna do with the other single door I'm also gonna make it lighter I just wanted to show you the comparison and I don't know if you've noticed there's another hole coming out the wall and there's uh, the plastic tube running out here you can see the floor the grounds a little bit wet because that's the uh, drip tray that's bringing the water out the fridge so I have all of that outside so I have no moisture build up on the inside so if I didn't cover anything forgot about something I'm not sure uh, you're more than welcome to talk to me uh, I'm gonna put on another beverage cooler that I made running on a bromide bank look out for that that's actually quite interesting thanks a lot you guys bye